Hello and welcome to YHTV's Flowing into Awareness with visionary and master intuitive Anatara. I'm Christina Suzuma, your host for this program. Today's episode is Speak Like a Child, Say What You Mean. And with us is the beautiful Anatara. Hello, Christina. Hello, Anatara. Yay, I could, we could just be our kids. <laughs> I, I was going to say that I could hear what you mean in the way you introduced me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good topic. I like yeah. this topic already. Oh, yeah, definitely. I um I just uh, I was just like, gifted with the birth of um of my first granddaughter. And you know, every single child that comes in to all of us is so special and so, you know, so amazing. And, and, and that it is finally a girl to me is just this fulfillment. It's a, it's a full circle. And, and as she is here, I am listening to the vocalizations, the sounds, the, 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 the simple little bits of air and breath that come in and out of her. Um, and, and I've noticed that there isn't any possible way that she could be not expressing what's truly going on for her. In other mm-hmm. words, every sound that comes out of her little tiny mouth <laughs> is real. It's all real. It's all truth for her. And and we, you know, we we become so programmed, you know, that, that those beautiful, <laughs> delicate, special little parts of us become programmed to say things in a certain way or with a certain lilt or an accent or an emphasis that is that is trained into our different the different languages that we speak. And and there are parts of all those languages that are similar, and there are parts of every language, you know, that have their own unique um, intonations and, and handles to them. And wouldn't it be amazing if we could just develop language that really says what we mean, so that the emotion given and directed through that language is reflective of exactly what we mean and want and not what we're being told or think we have to say. I mean, th- think about it even just today, probably, Christina, where you where you had to explain something in a certain way or use certain kinds of words or language to get a point across. Mm. Did, yeah, did that happen to you at some point today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, it's true. It's true. Yeah. What we're, what we build up as time goes on, our repertoire. <laughs> exactly. And each of us has our own repertoire and our own use of the language that is common. Uh, and and what I, when I'm watching, you know, I watch the, these infant grandchildren and then become babies and then they become toddlers and they start to take on our language and they learn the words that we use for things and they learn the the affect, the, go, the feeling, the emotion, the facial expression that probably goes on with whatever those words are. <laughs> and and you wonder whether that that stream that's coming through them to use those words, to speak like a child, to say what they mean mean isn't being you know hidden a little bit or buried perhaps by the language we have given them to use so so one of the things i've really noticed is that when kids are learning and developing language they have their own words for everything that have absolutely <laughs> nothing to do with what we say the word for that particular object is <laughs> and and as parents when you're starting to communicate with a child you start to use those words with that particular child and eventually the whole family is using those words <laughs> then, then then the kid gets older and you think well we better teach this poor child how to speak the way the rest of us do or he'll never be understood when he goes out into the real world. And and I suppose that could be a problem. And I think my next question is, does that really matter? Uh, You know, I, I love to, I love to believe that whatever we are really feeling and whatever we are really thinking can come through the sounds and the and the the inflections and the tones of whatever voice we decide to use to communicate. You know, I, I, I work, I work in, in a noticeable way not to shut down the things that kids say to me, you know, whether they're 12 or whether they're, you know, two weeks old. I, I, am, I am looking at how I hear what they are trying to tell me. You know, wh- where is the, 
the truth in that for them? Where is the real feeling in that for them? What is being expressed through that? And the other thing that I'm noticing is that my intuitive abilities to notice and to receive increase immensely when I take the time to just slow down and listen. Mm -hmm. And when I am really listening, there's a, there's a, it's like a, a current that goes between myself and anyone, not just kids, but there's a current that goes between us that is saying, I invite your truth. I invite you to tell me what you really mean. I am creating a space around you to speak as you want to speak. So wouldn't it be incredible if we could do that for each other? You know, there, there, as adults, there might be times when it's only gibberish we hear. <laughs> and there might be times when we really don't necessarily understand us each other. But wouldn't it be amazing if we could speak to each other, you know, same language to each other or different languages to one another and know what we are saying, know that we are speaking our truth and that there is a way for that to be reflected back to us. You know, what, what centeredness and harmony there is in that idea. Really? Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's a, that's a, a lovely point you bring up and, 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 um, I I hear it. I, I I remember being amongst that, and I am sort of amongst it because I'm involved so highly with the school and all these kids that are coming in. And interestingly enough, all these children that speak all these different languages, you know, here, you know, we're in the midst of Los Angeles. We're in the midst of a lot of immigrants and and all the different languages. And and I sit and I watch and I listen. And as you say. If you are just still, you understand what they're saying <laughs> or what they're asking for or anything like that. Um, and it, it's and I believe that um, in the regular so-called system, yes, it is necessary that the children are understood. But now I think there are, you know, the different teachings that are allowing children to, to be able to grow and nurture mm. however that path is. And mm-hmm. there are certain systems of teaching now that accept that. Like children do not learn to read till they're seven or eight years old, as opposed to right from two and three, they're waiting till se- seven or eight. And it's, it's fine if you can keep them on that system. <laughs> But if you cannot. <laughs> but, and, and, the, and the way I look at it is that, you know, we have this tool of language and we have the tool of the of written language as well, letters and words and sounds. And there is a way that all of those things can be available with the truth of speaking what we really mean to say. Oh, yes. And, and that each child has, has their own, you know, their own ability to, to work with those things, to work with how they present themselves and to receive in the way that they're going to receive. Um, you know, I look at some of my grandchildren who didn't care at all about the written word, word until they were, you know, eight or nine, and and but were forced to do it sooner. They did. And then I look at some of them who are two really, really want to understand and and follow the symbology of what the letters is. Yes. Yes. Um, I've, I, and, and it's nice to be able to provide whatever that is for each one. I have found myself involved in very, very philosophical discussions with people that's, with a person that speaks another language of which I know very, very little. And also at the same time to know that with the pidgin English and or the pidgin Spanish or French we were using, that the communication was of the highest order possible. Mm-hmm. And, and if, it, you know, if we relax and we listen, you know, the way that, the way that you're, describing it, then we do hear what's really being said, and we invite the truth to be told, and we stay present for however that truth meshes with and merges with whatever we are and whatever we're thinking. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's this becomes this beautiful reciprocal dance of, of, of speaking, sounding, and receiving. Mm-hmm. It, it's priceless. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like the different dialects and the different village dialects and the different, yes, all the different yeah, areas and yeah. regions. It could be, for example, <laughs> English, but with a different intonation, with a different rhythm, with a different grammatical structure. Yes, I, I agree. It, it is really beautiful. It is really beautiful. <laughs> but I, I, I 
I think through this talk, it is about the truth. Exactly. The truth that is coming forward. The exactly. The truth that is coming out of that, uh, that child, that, that inner being, as opposed to weaving through the mesh. <laughs> The well, mission we've veiled ourselves with oh, as we get older. <laughs> that's so true. So, so, yeah, so thanks so much for bringing it back to that point, because at, just before you said it, I was thinking, it is. It's about the harmony of being one's truth, mm-hmm. the harmony of expressing one's truth, and, and the harmony of knowing that it is safe to express the truth. Mm. Mm, lovely. <laughs> oh, very nice. And, and Anatara, this is dedicated to some people aren't, in your lives, isn't it? <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, I forgot to mention that this is dedicated to all of my grandchildren, who, whether near or far, constantly show me that speaking their truth is the most sincere and valuable and sweetest gift of all, mm-hmm. and and I find that they are able to do that and able to do that with with great. Um, ease and and um, oh, safety, a sense of safety and, and being wanted and being included when they can tell that I am listening. Yeah. When, I, when I am turned on instead of turned off, when they know that all of my listening senses are open and when they know that whatever they say is going to be accepted and heard and and actually believed by me because I know that it's their truth. Mm. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anatara. And I do speak the truth. <laughs> 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 Thank you. And of course, we would like to thank each and every one of you for joining us in this new platform of education and information. We're grateful for your continuous support, and we look forward to hearing your feedback on how we can serve you better. You can connect with Anatara by following her on Twitter, at Anatara, and of course through her own website, anatara.ca, anatara.ca. We always look forward to hearing your comments, your suggestions. Don't hesitate to do that or ask any questions you like. Um, Scroll down on your screen and type it into the comment box, no matter when this is. This could be a year after we've recorded this or two, and we will definitely reply to you. Or give us a call at 818-LET'S-TALK, 818-LET'S-TALK. Thank you for joining us today, and until next time, namaste. That's awful. We have to fix you if you can't hold your glass of wine. (laughs) Uh, But I started to listen to the words she said, grab and grasp and grip. And the thought came to me to ask her a question. So I said, well, is there something you're holding too tightly? Is there something that you need to let go? And she was quiet for just a brief second and then looked up at me and said, I don't want to let my kids go. And I was... Not only stunned that she had an answer, I was stunned that she had such a profound answer.